Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay. I'm going to review my War of the Ring tournament game. This is round two, game one, and I am playing Shadow, and my opponent is playing Free. And you can see the opening rolls. Let's just uh, jump right in. So I allocated one eye as Shadow, and I did get enough musters, so that's always nice for me. And you can see our starting hands. I'm happy to see Orcs multiplying again. This is a good early muster card. And you can see that the free player got Scouts, which is a good, great card to have early on. All right, so looking at a roll like this, clearly I'm going to muster Isengard to war, and I'm thinking, all right, this army is going to get built up. I'm going to head to the north, and, and we'll see what comes of it. These three musters for the free people give a lot of flexibility for them. I'm not sure where they're going to defend. I want to try and attack someplace that's weak. So you can see what they end up doing. Obviously, they move first and are safe. I muster Isengard to war. That's pretty standard. And then they move to Old Forest Road and to Westham Net. I'm obviously, uh, in my last couple of videos, I noted the value of getting these armies to here so that they can eventually get into Helm's Deep. Uh, so that's, a, I think, a good early move. And continuing on, I go ahead and play Orcs Multiplying again, and I want to see where, where he musters. He musters the Elves, and then I go ahead and use that muster to get Sauron to war. I thought about starting to move armies already. This army can come in, this army can come in, but eventually I'm going to need to get Sauron to war, and I won't really mind if I get a bunch of extra musters early on. I'm happy to get the Southrons and Easterlings to, to war early, and I'm not quite ready to move my armies yet. I'm happy to do an extra early muster right there. And then he uh, gets the elves one away from war. So I'm, I'm sort of, I've lost hope of being able to get Lorien and Woodland Realm besieged at the same time. And I think that's a nice play. It makes me think maybe he has um, Kierdin's ships or something like that. Um, I'm obviously wary of a power too great heading toward Lorien. So I'm definitely thinking this army is going to head up to Woodland Realm and then I'll use some of these armies, maybe, maybe get some a few points in Gondor. And obviously Rohan is always a good target. But I'm, it's a little unclear with these early musters what's the weakest place uh, to attack. All right, so I go ahead and start moving my armies in. I leave one army in Mount Gundabad because I know that I'm going to be putting the north to war pretty early. And therefore, it is possible for a military attack to come, come take Mount Gundabad. So I want to just think ahead about that a little bit. I don't need all of these armies. At the same time, I do want to include some reinforcements that can help support the north attack depending on how, how well it goes. Maybe he has more musters, maybe he has scouts. I mean, it's relatively unlikely that he has scouts. At least that's what I'm thinking. We know in this actual game, it's 100% chance that he has scouts. But um, I just I just want to be prepared. So that's why I brought four. I thought about maybe three. I think four seems like an okay number. All right, so um, I get another card that allows me to draw a tile. So I'm looking I'm looking forward to that as soon as the fellowship gets revealed. And he gets an early Mithril Coat and Sting and a reinforcement for Rivendell. So that's these are all fine, fine cards. He's getting, it would be better for him if he had a few more playable cards. N none of these are particularly that exciting to play early. Um, you know, Mithril Coat and Sting, it's okay, but the risk of playing it is Nazgul Strike. So Nazgul Strike can get rid of Mithril Coat and Sting while the Fellowship is not yet in Mordor, not yet climbing up the Cracks of Mount Doom. So, um, you know, that's that's a little tricky to play it early. He could play it, but it's better to save it if you can. All right, so I allocate one eye and roll another, and he gets no movement. So obviously this isn't this isn't great for him, especially with how few playable cards he has right here. And um, I don't I didn't roll any musters. So this would have been a turn that I could get the Witch King into play. I would be able to take Carrick, that's one, take Old Forest Road, that's two, take Dale, that's three. So I would get I would get the North to war and I would be able to muster the Witch King. So I'm a little disappointed I didn't I didn't get a muster, but this is okay. I'm happy to see that he doesn't have movement. With with four cards, I'm thinking he's gonna have plenty of playable cards, but in fact the first thing that he does is he draws a character card. So I, I think that's quite bad luck to have four unplayable cards 
And and maybe if it were me, I would have gone ahead and just, just played Mithril Coat and Sting here. And then I would cycle a new card. Um, maybe I played Kindred of Glorfindel, even though even though I don't really need to reinforce Rivendell. It draws me two cards, and I have a muster sitting right here. So I don't know. It's it's a little tricky. This is a bad roll, so it's hard to know exactly what to do with it. My inclination probably would be to play Kindred of Glorfindel, but drawing a card, it's, it's not crazy. All right, so uh, that's what he does. And then I go ahead and attack Old Forest Road. I'm thinking it's relatively unlikely he has scouts. He's only drawn two cards, right? The odds of having one of the three scouts cards in the top top two is quite low. Maybe I should have figured, well, why did he? Why would he bother moving that, that unit in? I, I think he's still bothered to move it in even if you don't have scouts. So that didn't really give me much information one way or another. All right, so I attack. He um, he does have scouts, and um, we retreat into Woodland Realm. And now I'm faced with a little bit of a tricky situation because I want to besiege Woodland Realm, but I also don't want Dale to be um, powered up too much. And so if I attack Woodland Realm, that's one and Dale and and then the North is one away from war, and then if I attack Dale after that, possibly he can retreat into Erebor, um, but then he can start mustering in Carrick. Now these four units should be able to take out that elite, but I'm a little nervous about that. So um, I'm not sure. I, I would appreciate your comments if you have thoughts on how I handled this. What I ended up doing was I um, I moved armies into Carrick, getting uh, the North one away from war. And then he played Mithril Coat and Sting, and then I attacked Dale. Um, I guess I, I guess I drew I drew a character card first. He uses a ring, right? He uses a ring to move, and I don't know. I mean, I guess what else are you gonna do? You didn't really draw any great cards. Um, I might have still saved that ring, but I guess you want to keep you want to keep the fellowship moving. The problem with using this ring right here is that it gives me the chance to get the Witch King after all. So I, I think, I, I just don't think that one extra movement is worth it. Could play Kindred of Glorfindel. So I don't know. That It's an interesting point. So um, he does move safely. And then I decide to attack Dale this way as opposed to attacking Woodland Realm because I want to be able to avoid any musters in Dale. He would use this muster in Dale if I if I besiege Woodland Realm at this point. So what ends up happening is I don't get a six on my roll. I had six dice to get a six. It's you know basically 50-50 shot. And um or no better that's better than 50-50 shot. I, I have way better than 50-50 shot. Um, I would expect to get one hit, but I don't get a hit. And um and so he gets to retreat and he retreats into the Woodland Realm. So I'm not happy that he managed to get two northern regulars and a leader into Woodland Realm, but this force should be big enough to take it. Um, it's a little that's a little bit of bad luck for me. Maybe what I could have done is attack Woodland Realm first before taking Carrick, then attack Dale. If I miss, he gets to go to Erebor, and then this one muster, these four units can take out Carrick. So, um, I don't know. Maybe that's better. This way, at least, he hasn't reinforced Erebor at all. So at some point, I can go take out Erebor, and hopefully Erebor will not have been reinforced. All right, but I go ahead and get the Witch King. So he uses that muster to get Gondor one away from war, which is fine, reasonable. Um, I might have considered getting the Elves to war at that point, because the North is already at war. So it sort of forces me to attack with this unit, with this army, instead of getting the Witch King. Because if I don't attack, then next turn he'll be able to muster into Woodland Realm. So I might have considered, instead of mustering Gondor, given that I already have the North at war and having an additional faction at war doesn't allow me any benefit because of the, the Witch King, um, I might have gone ahead and mustered the Elves straight to war at that point. It would have been a tough choice for Shadow. At that point, I don't know, I probably would have attacked in, saved the ring, because getting rid of one elite unit in there is worth is probably worth a whole die. 
um, for next round. And a ring. So I, pr I probably would not have gotten the Witch King. Maybe he, maybe he wanted me to get the Witch King and waste and, and use my ring, but... Okay, so um, we activate everyone and we continue on to next round. He draws, um, you know, continue to not draw great cards. Here's something to think about. What do you, what do you get rid of here in terms of cards? So I have Shadows Gather, Candles of Corpses, Worm Tongue, Nazgul Search, Denethor's Folly, Falthing from the Deep, and Orc Patrol. What card do you discard here? So you can think about it, pause the video for a second, decide what you discard. Um, I got rid of Denethor's Folly. I think that's relatively straightforward because there's no, I don't have any Isengard units nearby where I'm attacking. And while I do eventually want to attack Minas Tirith, I'm still kind of far away from it. I, d I do like that card. It's a very powerful combat effect to, to be able to take out Minas Tirith, but um, it just felt a little far away. And I like all these character cards. I want to be able to cycle with Worm Tongue once my, once my Witch King is up here and cycle into more character cards. All right, I allocate an eye. I roll two more. He gets a great roll here. This should let him, you know, have decent chances at getting, at getting Gandalf. And um, he plays Axe and Bow first. It makes sense to play it before you start moving, so you get the extra character card draw. And um, let's see what he drew. He drew Dead Men. So obviously that's a useful card to, to have as an option. And I get the Southrons and Easterlings to war because I want to at least make him nervous about what's going on with, uh, with, with that Will of the West. And he's, he has a safe movement, and then I get them to war. He goes ahead and moves again. I, I think that's definitely right. I mean, if I happen to have Day Without Dawn this early on, I'm going to be able to stop him from getting Gandalf, then, you know, bad luck for him. But... All right, so I hit him, which at this point he wants, so he can get rid of Gandalf, pro probably. Um, and he uh, takes takes an eye, so I get to reveal him. That's obviously lucky for me, and, you know, slightly lucky. I have slightly better than 50% chance of revealing on that. But, you know, you, there are plenty of times you don't reveal them uh, through Moria. And so he goes through Moria because he has plenty of, he has plenty of corruption and hasn't taken any damage yet. Um, and he uses Axe and Bow to reduce the one instead of losing Gandalf to the one. And I think that's a really, this is a really key moment in the game. You can decide, would you have lost Gandalf to the one or would you risk it and see if you can get a higher value tile? So my thinking is there are the zero reveals and the three eyes are three tiles that are much worse, really much worse than losing, um, than, than not taking Gandalf because you have a Will of the West right now. So that's the difference of a whole die next time. Granted, it is some corruption difference, but I'm probably willing to trade some corruption to get an extra die at this point, given relatively how healthy the Fellowship is. I have Nithril Coat and Sting. I had Axe and Bow in play. So um, the Fellowship is relatively healthy. So I, I think those, these are five tiles that are way worse. There are only three tiles that are better where you, you would get something better that you'd be very happy to lose Gandalf to a three. And then two tiles that, or three tiles that are slightly better, you know, obviously better to lose Gandalf to a two than a one. That's a difference of one corruption. And, and four tiles that are the same. So six that are better-ish or significantly better and five that in my opinion are way worse. So I think this is a pretty big gamble that he's taking to, to not lose Gandalf right now because five out of, however many tiles are here, 15, you know, one third chance that you're not going to be able to lose Gandalf if you don't lose him right now. And you have the Will of the West sitting right here. So, and you're revealed and you're about to be revealed. And so Strider being the guide is going to be very useful for next turn. Um, so I just, I don't think I would have made this risk, but he did. And um, it worked out great for him, right? He got the best possible result um, 20% chance of drawing the, you know, the best tile to lose Gandalf to. Um, so, you know, good for him. Sometimes risks pay off. And, um, I think, you know, it's good to know when to take risks. Obviously there's a lot of, uh, randomness in this game. And so being aware of what randomness you're facing is important. Um, given the state of the fellowship, I just don't know that I would have risked it. Okay. But he did, and it weren't, worked out great. So Strider becomes Guide. Um, I don't have Day Without Dawn, so of course he's going to get Gandalf. I attack Woodland Realm and start to start to make some progress there. Um, 
I don't remember exactly what I was doing. Oh, right. Um, so I attack Woodland Realm. I'm cycling Foul Stench to try and get some better some better combat cards, and I draw into I mean some better character uh, hunting cards, and I and I got Morgul Wound. So obviously that's great for me to be able to play while he's revealed. So I go ahead and spend a character die um, to play it, and then um, I go ahead and move on to the Fellowship. Um, I don't have to do that now. Maybe I should have continued to attack Woodland Realm while I had the chance. I don't have a card that I want to play. So my thinking was, next round, I'm going to want to move on to the Fellowship to harass them because it's just half an army movement. So I might as well do that. And if I wait until next turn to do this attack, then I will be able to have other combat cards to play and be able to cycle them with the Witch King. That's my thinking here. Um, but it does risk that he's going to get Thranduil's archers and be able to reinforce Woodland Realm. And obviously you sort of want to complete a combat, or complete a siege, and then move on to the next one when you can. The other thing I'm thinking about is um, I have Nazgul Search. If I get rid of Strider, maybe I'm going to want to play Nazgul Search, or maybe I'll get an, another um, Nazgul Movement card like Nazgul Strike. I really want to cycle into... Um, Nazgul Strike. That's that's I'm remembering now. I, I really want to get Nazgul Strike so I can get rid of Mithril Coat and Sting. Um, and so I want to have character cards to play while I'm attacking so I can get deeper into my character deck. And Nazgul Strike has the added benefit of allowing me to move all my Nazgul so I'll be able to get a full leadership con contingent of five up here instead of just three. Obviously it's better to attack with five. So I'm hoping to just delay this attack slightly. I know I'm going to move on to the Fellowship. So that's, that's why I did it, the ordering that way, even though it means I'm going to discard a card. Okay, so we go on to next round. This is a tricky one. Um, so again, you can think about what would you, what would you discard for me here? Um, I, I'm not really sure um, what's, what's best. My thinking is all three of these character attack cards, card uh, tile drawing cards are great because they inflict corruption and they reduce the, they reduce the hunt pool. And Candles of Corpses is one and a half corruption, so that's pretty significant. And I like Nazgul Search to be able to um, reveal them, especially once Strider is gone. This is this is a more powerful effect once Strider is gone. And so it sort of left me between these two. What's what's the right one to to keep? Uh, maybe I'm investing too much in hunting the Fellowship, but um, it feels it feels worth it to play these cards. They just so that was my thinking. I ended up uh, I ended up discarding the muster Ulakai. So maybe that's wrong. I, I would welcome comments if you have comments. What would you discard in that situation? And you can see here for um, for free people they had a choice uh, of also what to discard. They discarded Eagles are coming with heroic death. I really like heroic death um, as a just a good combat defense. Part of me feels like maybe I could get rid of this Ent. Like, uh, I just, I feel like often I can bluff with Ents. Now, of course, some people can call the bluff, and so it's useful to be able to keep it, to be able to call it. Um, I also wonder about Kind Kindred of Glorfindel. Do I really, do I really need that card? Um, the Elves are at war at this point. Um, I, I, I like Heroic Death. Obviously, Eagles Are Coming is not a useful card effect, but, um, I think Heroic Death is pretty, pretty useful. Okay, so, um, but it's relative, it's relatively minor. So he gets, let's see, I allocate an I and I roll one more and he gets a bunch of, uh, a bunch of character movement and Will of the West. So, you know, obviously, obviously that's great for him. Gives him a lot of flexibility. I'm thinking, you know, at this point he might consider getting Aragorn and because he knows last turn, I did not have Day Without Dawn. I certainly would have played Day Without Dawn if I had it. So I've only drawn a single card. So his chances of being able to separate um, Aragorn, uh, separate Strider, especially because he has I Will Go Alone. So that puts him directly at Minas Tirith. And, um, you know, he could get, he could get Aragorn. Uh, what turn is this? This is turn four, I think. Turn four, Aragorn. Feels pretty good to me. Uh, he does have Athelos, so I probably play Athelos first and then maybe hide, play Athelos, and then get Aragorn. We'll, we'll see what he does. All right, so my plan, um, he goes ahead and moves into Erebor with that. I, I'm not sure exactly why that happened. 
I'm not sure that I would prioritize it that highly. I'm not really that close to attacking. Maybe he was worried about me attacking with this army into Iron Hills to get to get that one unit. Maybe. I mean, that is something to consider. I hadn't really thought about that. Um, but thinking about it now, maybe that's something to consider. You know, this army isn't enough to take out the dwarves by itself. And so what I, I would be worried that... Um, he might muster and then just start mustering up dwarves here pretty easily. Uh, and this army, I don't really want to move off of Woodland Realm until Woodland Realm is defeated. So I think that'd be a little premature. It's, it's not crazy. I might try hiding the Fellowship first. I guess that's my, that's my thought. Um, okay, so that is what it is. He, I, I go ahead and muster because I, I don't know exactly where that muster should go. Maybe it goes here. Um... You know, I think in retrospect, maybe maybe the right play is attack in in uh, Woodland Realm first. If this goes very well, then I think, ah, I don't need more to be able to muster up here. I'm going to have enough to be able to take out Erebor just with these armies and this army combined. And instead, maybe I start mustering in Isengard because I know eventually I'm going to be using these armies for something, probably. So I think that was, you know, often it makes sense to, to muster early in the turn so that you have them for later movements. Um, but I wonder if I just if I just did one more attack here, I think maybe I'm worried about not having a combat card because I want to play basically all of these cards. And so I'm waiting for him to hide the fellowship so that I can play Foul Thing or Orc Patrol or Isildur's Bane so that I can then reveal him. I could play these now, but it's better to wait to play them until he hides the fellowship so that if I get any one of these five tiles, five out of 14, you know, decent, what is that? That's like 35% chance, more than a third chance to be able to get these. Um, you know, that's that's worth waiting. So I'm, I'm gonna wait until he hides and then and then play those cards. All right, so I muster there. I think that was probably a little premature. I could have, I could have just attacked in Woodland Realm once. I think that would have been, that would have been safe. All right, so he goes ahead and hides with the Palantir. I think that makes sense. Um, Gandalf is in guide, so you know any of these character cards that he wants to play, he can use a character die, and this just gives him more flexibility to move if he wants. All right, so now that he's hidden, I go ahead and I play Foul Thing from the Deep, and I think that's, I think that's the right one to play first because. I want a chance to get Strider, right? If, if I do any damage, he has to take a random companion. And um, and then I have a chance, like I could draw any of these ones, right? I have a good chance of getting these ones. So I could get any of the reveals, any of these five reveals, obviously not the eyes, but any of the any of these five reveals, great. Any of these ones, um, if I manage to get a random companion of a, of a you know, a level two companion, I'm, I'm making, I'm profiting corruption. Um, so this is, I think, really a beautiful time to get to play this foul thing. And even one eye has been removed from the pool. So the chances are even lower to get an eye. Um, but I get an eye. <laughs> uh, so, you know, sometimes, sometimes that happens. Um, so, so there we go. And then, um, and then he, he passes and I'm not sure that's right. I mean, you know, you're going to move. So... I don't know exactly why you're passing here. Um, you know, if I move a Nazgul onto you, now I have a second reroll. Not, not. I mean, I'm probably not going to do that, um, but I could. And I guess, I guess there are cards like Nazgul Strike that uh, I could only play if he's moved. So okay, so maybe that's a good argument for passing, l letting me do some attacks. If I if I have Nazgul Strike, I won't be able to use it to, to get more leadership in Woodland Realm. All right, so um, since he passed, I want a chance to reveal him again. Uh, I might as well take another shot at it, so I do. And um, I draw a three. So three is obviously good because it's three corruption, um, but it would also be nice to reveal him. Um, so he takes three corruption, but now I've set him up nicely for his Athalos play. So he plays um, Athalas. That's obviously great. Strider's Guide, beautiful. Um, how much do we expect to heal here? Um, four sixths. Four times three, so 12. So we expect to heal two here, 
right? That's what we would expect. Um, and he does. He heals too. So that's that's great. And um, I go ahead and move my armies in. I guess what I'm thinking at this point is I'm in the same situation that I was in uh, uh, last turn, at the, near the end of last turn, where I want to try and cycle into uh, um, cards that I can play, specifically character cards, that I can play in this battle so that I can get deeper into the character deck. So so I might as well, since I know I'm eventually going to bring these armies in to attack Erebor, I might as well do that now and then wait a little bit to attack. All right, so I go ahead and move some armies. I'm getting, um, getting this army ready here to maybe at some point go over to Gondor. I hadn't quite figured out exactly where my 10 victory points are coming from. I've been quite focused on trying to hurt the Fellowship, which I haven't been particularly effective at, but um, here we go. So he moves the Fellowship at this point, and I miss. And then, um, you know, that was the moment, by the way, that was the moment that he could have, if he wanted to, played I Will Go Alone and then Crown Aragorn, right? Because he has one extra movement, he could get there and Crown Aragorn. And this early in the game, I think my inclination would have been to do that. I like having six dice and the flexibility that allows. These armies are still pretty far away from attacking Minas Tirith. And then he can spend a character die to get into Rohan and then later do Dead Men of Dunharrow. So, um, you know, I think my inclination would be to do that. Obviously, it's nice to, to move, um, you know, at least once per turn. So, and it turned out this was useful that he did get that that unit into into um, Erebor. So I don't know exactly. He didn't really have enough dice to be able to both get this army into Erebor, hide, move, play Athelas, play I will go alone, and crown Aragorn. That's that's too many actions. So you have to either not move at all this round, um, or you have to not get Aragorn. So he decides, I'll wait on Aragorn. I can get him later. That's reasonable. I mean, obviously the value of Aragorn goes down uh, the later in the game you get. So that, that's a, it's an interesting choice. All right. So I go ahead and put Aragorn under siege and then he moves a, a second time because what else is he going to do? Um, and I miss again. And and now this is tricky. I, I, I'm sort of stuck in my trap of I don't want to attack without having um, good combat cards to, to cycle, and so I move more armies. And I think I think this is probably a mistake. I think that I should be going ahead, go go ahead and attack Woodland Realm, see how it goes. Even if you don't have a card to play, you know I have eight dice to roll. I'm probably going to get one or two sixes. Whittle that down, and you know he's expected to get one or two hits. I can I can probably be fine whittling it down a bit. But I decide to move armies. And uh, there we go. So I now get a character card that I'm very happy to cycle. I don't feel the need to save this. So I'm going to cycle this card. So at least my strategy of eventually getting more character cards makes sense. I still do really want um, Nazgul Strike to get rid of Mithril Coat and Sting because that's a very powerful, that's probably the most powerful um, defensive corruption tile there is, uh, corruption card there is. Maybe, maybe Wizard Staff, but... Um, Okay, so he gets Riders of Theoden, he declares, and um, I allocate one eye and roll, and he gets a bunch of Palantirs again. So I wonder at this point, um, he's probably really high on Palantirs. Yeah, he's plus five on Palantirs. So obviously that's, that's not great. Um, it's mostly coming out of regular musters, so it's not that bad. Uh, obviously if that's coming more out of Wills of the West and Character Dice, that's, that's worse. But he is rolling quite high on Palantirs, so that, that is a little unlucky for him. All right, so um, he moves uh, safely. And then at this point, I, um, let's see, what am I, what am I thinking about here? I'm not sure why. I mustered an Isagon first, I mustered again. Is my plan to play Orc Patrol, Nazgul Search. I'm not sure exactly why I'm waiting on this. Um, I guess my plan is I want to go ahead and move Nazgul with a, with a regular character die because I want to get my five Nazgul up here 
for, for maximum leadership. And I want to put one on the fellowship. Um, I think, I'm not sure. I, I actually am not sure exactly what my strategy is. Aha, I forgot. Okay, so uh, this, is, this is a good thing to consider. Because he rolled such little, um, he didn't roll any musters and he didn't roll, uh, he, it, it seems like he might be a little stuck. I decide now is the right moment to go after Dole Amroth. I calculate that with these with these cards, I can go, with these dice, I can go after Dole Amroth. And if he doesn't have um, Kyrdin's ships and he doesn't have Immerhill of Dole Amroth yet, which he's only drawn five cards and one of them was scouts, um, relatively low chances of that. So I have, I have some chance of getting Dole Amroth under siege quickly and being able to take it out fast. So I think this is... I don't know. I don't know exactly what should be happening here. I, um, it's always a shame to move Nazgul away from a place where you have already sort of landed them. Um, and so I guess that's why I mustered with the intent to um, have more Nazgul. And I don't bother putting one on the Fellowship because I don't think he's moving again this turn. And he'll just end up declaring wherever he goes um, next round. So, and I want to have, I want to have good leadership. In, in these attacks. So that's my thinking. I, I wonder what, what would you do here with, with these dice that I had? Would you go after Dol Amroth here? Would you continue to take out um, Woodland Realm before he manages to draw Thranduil's archers? Uh, what, what would your plan be? So that's what I did. Um, and then he uses a ring to move. And I think that's really interesting because what that means is next turn, he's only going to be two away and he's going to be much more likely to be able to make it in next round. Um, if he didn't do that, then he wouldn't have, uh, he wouldn't have such good chances. Um, but at the same time, I might be tempted to save that ring to muster in Dole Amroth as this army comes in if I don't otherwise have um, Kyrdin's ships or... Um, Immerhill. So kind of the fact that he did that made me really worried because I don't know that I would have spent that die and that and that ring knowing that I'm about to get besieged in Dol Amroth without being prepared for it. All right. So, but at this point, I'm kind of committed to it. Um, I do have half orcs and goblin men. So I can think to myself, all right, if I need to reinforce this, I can get another elite in there. That, that might be okay. Um, but being able to quickly go after it is good. And I have Shadows Gather, so maybe that's another way of reinforcing. And Muma Kill is a powerful combat effect. So it felt worth the gamble to me um, taking this out while I could. All right. So um, I go ahead and cycle uh, Little Asai. And uh, again, I'm still trying to get to Nazgul Strike. I get Cruel Weather, though. So Cruel Weather is obviously a great card to have in hand. Uh, in case he doesn't get too much, uh, too much movement next turn, and I also have Nazgul Search, so I can really I can really slow him down. When he makes one movement, if he doesn't get revealed, I can play Nazgul Search. He'll have to hide. Now, granted, he does have Aragorn or Strider in there, so that won't be as effective, but it can slow him down a bit. And then Cruel Weather to push him back. So he's definitely going to need um, three movement. Well, maybe not definitely. If he moves, gets revealed, moves, gets revealed, then he'll only need two. But probably he's going to need three movement next turn. So that might I might be able to stall him. All right. So he plays Kindred of Glorfindel, I guess, to, to just cycle into uh, character card. I mean, uh, reinforcement cards, because what else could he do? Um, you know, maybe Riders of Theoden. I guess he wants to he wants to draw some cards. So makes sense. Uh, and I'm getting nervous. And now he plays I Will Go Alone. So, yeah. And he sends Strider and Mary to um, Helm's Deep. And, I, and I, I'm really surprised by this. He doesn't have a Will of the West. We don't know when he's going to get a Will of the West. So my thinking is he's, he has to have Dead Men, right? That, that, should, be, that should be what I'm thinking. Um, or he's hoping to draw into it. So I, I don't really know. When, when he did that, I certainly thought, I guess he has dead men. Um, all right. And then I go ahead and besiege Dol Amroth. I'm waiting for this Palantir to then be Kyrdin's ships. Um, but no, it's Riders of Theoden. 
So I'm feeling pretty lucky that, that that gamble paid off. I mean, he didn't draw that many strategy cards, so it wasn't an unreasonable guess, but uh, I certainly was nervous about it. And, um, okay, and then we, and then we uh, for, my, for my last card, now that he has separated Strider, I'm feeling really great about my chances of stalling him next turn because I have Nazgul Search. He's going to have to spend another character die to hide, um, and I have Orc Patrol to be able to potentially reveal him. So I go ahead, I think I spend my character die right here to spend, um, to get to reveal him because now um, five out of 14, uh, no, five out of 12, five out of, five out of 12 reveal him, uh, but, I, but I get an eye. So I get another eye on that, which is obviously, um, obviously unlikely and disappointing for me, but obviously good for him. And, um, okay, so moving on, uh, so you could think a little bit about what, what to discard there. There are, there are a lot of good choices. I'm obviously happy to see Ringwraiths are abroad. That's a great card. I'm feeling great about my chances of stalling him, right? He's going to need four movement to do it, and he's going to be pretty surprised. So, um, to have both Nazgul Search and Cruel Weather. Though I have been, I have been cycling pretty deep. I'm, I'm really hoping that I can get to Nazgul Strike before he gets into Mordor. All right. So, um, I roll four eyes. Obviously, that's um, probably more than I want. And he rolls five movement. So, that's not great for me. Um, and he immediately uses the Will of the West to move. And what's interesting there is, I, I don't know why you need to use the Will of the West there. You're not really worried about having enough movement to get in. You sort of, I, I think you'd feel pretty sure that you have enough movement to get in. Um, but, I, you know, I would be thinking dead men and then crown, right? Because, like, I, I would tend to move once and then see how it goes and then move a second time and see how that goes. So if you don't get revealed on your first movement, then you can move again, and uh, yeah. So um, so he moves and he's safe. Now at this point, I'm thinking about playing Cruel Weather. I'm thinking about playing Nazgul Search. Um, and maybe the right thing to do here is Nazgul Search, but what that feels to me like is wasting one of my character dice for one of his character dice. He has plenty of character dice at, um, in this particular case. So in this situation, I don't know that it's worth it to trade. Normally you would want to. You'd be very happy as Shadow to trade one die to one die for the free people. But um, given the number of eyes that I rolled and given that I want to ideally cycle in to um, like a red tile maybe, uh, it, it might be worth it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm not going to get, maybe I'm not going to get red tiles here. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do for my, for my cards here, but I, I want to be prepared to play Cruel Weather and one more. I don't, I don't know. It's not obvious what I should be doing here. So I attack with this and, um, I want to make sure that I take care of Dol Amroth while I can. I, I play Mumakil. It's a very strong combat card and I, uh, take care of Dol Amroth. You know, that combat, it's great to roll well, but honestly, uh, the, even a very average combat would have been enough for me there. And then he moves again. And I hit him this time, and I don't reveal him. And, and that's good, right? So for, for, for me, I did get lucky there. Um, I had better than a half chance, better than 50-50 to reveal him. And at this point, that's great for me because uh, now he's going to have to wonder if I have, if I have Cruel Weather. And so uh, we continue. Um, he loses Bormir, that makes sense. And I am mustering here. Now, it would be useful for me to think about where I'm getting my victory points. At this point, I'm thinking I'm still trying to take um, Helm's Deep and that I'm just gonna let the Ents, presumably as Ents by this point, I'm just gonna move this full army out and, and take Helm's Deep. Um, so maybe one option here is muster again with this and then attack Fords of Eisen and attack here. 
and then I manage to besiege Helm's Deep. I lose Saruman, but I manage to besiege Helm's Deep with a relatively small force. Maybe, maybe that's the right play. Uh, I don't know. So what I end up doing is going back up north. Um, so he moves again to make sure that I don't have cruel weather, which I think at this point is right. Um, and I hit him and uh, he gets revealed, which is obviously disappointing for him. Um, and then I get, I draw um, Legolas on the random and then I get a zero into, uh, into Mordor. So, you know, I think that's a pretty average result. Um, if, he, if I, he hadn't gotten revealed again, then I certainly would have used Nazgul Search. Um, so I play Ring Wraiths are abroad here because I want to go back up north and I want to, at this point, Cycle Cruel Weather and um, Nazgul Search because they are now useless cards to me and I feel sad that I didn't manage to get Nazgul Strike before he got into Mordor. Um, maybe the right play was to, was to come in here. Um... I don't know. That's that's a little that's a little tricky. Upon reflection, maybe I should have been thinking about this because he didn't have an easy way. He would have had to use another ring to get these armies, his last ring to get these armies into here. So that's that's something for me to consider. I put two Nazgul there in preparation, but then I go attack Woodland Realm, and um, the combat goes well, and I defeat them. And I cycle into On On They Went, which is obviously a good card to have. He hides the Fellowship. Again, we want to be careful about that. Um, but we know it's safe because all three of the tile drawing cards have been played. So you can safely do that. And um, I move armies here. I need to go get this army into Erebor. And maybe these armies by themselves could take it out. But... Um, I want to I want to take out Osgiliath so that I can defend Pelargir in case he doesn't have dead men. I kind of felt like if he had dead men, he would have played it this round um, with that Will of the West. But maybe that's thinking too much into it. I sort of I felt like he had dead men, and then I felt like he doesn't have dead men. So it's it's not entirely clear what to do. Either way, I wanted to have a big army near Pelargir if he does play dead men. So. Um, he goes ahead and moves Mary here. It's, you know, I don't know exactly what, what else to be doing there with that die. Um, yeah, there's not much else to do with that die. Okay, and then I play on on they went because I want it in the pool at the start of next round. So, yeah, he gets into Mordor and um, then he rolls three Wills of the West, and I have Day Without Dawn. So obviously that's going to be pretty rough for him. He moves first and gets a two and reveal, and then um, and then I play Day Without Dawn. So there's no obviously no question that I should do that. And then um, he passes. And so, you know, this is an interesting moment. What, what should I be doing here? He has only one movement. Um, maybe it's time for these guys to crash in. He would have to use his last ring to either get these guys in or to move and hide. So I don't know. Again, Helm's Deep is something to be, to be thinking about here. I'm a little worried about this army just quickly retaking Pilar gear. So I think I attack into, I think I attack into Osgiliath first. Um, I'm not worried about him immediately moving, so I'm going to play Ring is Mine. I also want to make sure that I play Candles of Corpses. So maybe I should be playing Ring is Mine now so that if he hides, I can still play Candles of Corpses before he gets Gollum. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what's right. So I, I attack as Gilead, and I play Great Host trying to keep that army out of Minas Tirith. Uh, and then I move these armies in to be prepared to take Erebor. So I... I think here, um, you know, I'm feeling like, okay, his odds of making it next round are relatively low. I should be able to get up to two more victory points next round. I'm going to get Erebor this round. I'll get two more victory points next round. And I have a lot of choices of where to do that. All right. So I play Candles of Corpses now. Um, and I get two, which is, you know, close to standard. And then um, I attack an Erebor cycling Nazgul Search. 
to try and get better character cards and um, that battle goes pretty average. I press because at this point I want to make sure that uh, I use that muster for the wit the the, um, the mouth and probably I should have put it in minus Morgul. I think I was putting it here thinking that I could use a bunch of character dice to move. Um, but really, I think Minus Morgul was probably the, the better spot so that I can then, when I move Nazgul, I can move straight to Minas Tirith as an option. And he he hides. So I didn't, I, by, by not attacking Helm's Deep, I allowed him to get away with not using his last ring. Because otherwise he would have either not been able to hide or he would have had to use his ring to get these guys in. And so I... Probably that was mistimed. I could have let Erebor sit. I was nervous about um, Dane Ironfoot's guard, but the chances of drawing it just on one card are pretty low. So, And he would have played it if he had it. So um, probably was better to crash in this way when I had the chance, when these armies couldn't easily get in there. I play the ring as mine. Obviously, that's good to have in the pool. And so at this point, you know, the hunt pool is looking, you know, pretty pretty good for me. Um, but also pretty, you know, these are, these are pleasant tiles once you have Gollum. So it's a lot of, it's going to depend on how many eyes there are. All right. So here is an exciting turn. Uh, I allocate one eye, I roll zero more and he rolls enough to be able to dunk the ring. Um, depending on how much he gets revealed. So this is a great point to pause the video and think about how do you get your last two victory points as Shadow. You could get Helm's Deep, but he'll be able to get somebody in, probably. Um, and he'll be able to play Ents, probably. Um, you could go for the Shire and Pilar Gear, as long as you're prepared to retake it. And, and, oh, sorry. Uh, the Shire and Edoras, as long as you're prepared to retake Pilar Gear once he plays Deadman. Um, or we could go for Minas Tirith. Maybe I can move these armies here to Lorien, but that's too far away. So um, I unfortunately miscounted. I thought that I had enough army movements to move these guys to the Shire, move these guys to Edoras, move these guys to Lamadon, and then be prepared to retake Pelargir after he plays Dead Men. Um, but unfortunately, I miscounted and I was off by half an army movement, uh, and I went down that path. Now, if I had a single extra, single Nazgul in Dol Amroth, then I would have been able to use this character die to make my final attack, right? Because I have, this is an attack um, and this is an attack. Now, also to be fair, I rolled very well. I rolled nine dice and we would expect me to get two and a half, uh, sorry, we would expect me to get four and a half attacks and I got one, two, three, four, five, six attacks. So, you know, that's above average. And then this muster can be used uh, as an attack because of the Witch King, I mean, because of the mouth. So, um, all right, so what ended up happening, he moved uh, safely, got Gollum, gets Gollum, it did not get revealed, which is obviously very important. I get give it to us in the pool. He plays there's another way to move and heal one. I get an eye at this point, which is important to reveal him. Uh, and significantly, this die does not go in the pool. That's very important to realize when you play there is another way. And then um, I go ahead and muster. My, my plan is to go ahead and take the Shire, take Edoras, and, and then be prepared to retake Pilar gear. Um, I have to send a D, and then he moves again, or he hides. Um, and then he starts passing. So I go ahead and start moving and I have to bring a decent enough force to Edoras so that it can take it if he um, moves this army in here. This was probably overkill. I didn't really need that. But at this point, I've realized my mistake. And if he has dead men, he's going to be able to stop me. Um, so I'm just at this point hoping he doesn't, he doesn't have dead men. Um, so... He moves one more time just to see what his options are. Now, if he gets revealed here, we know for sure that he's not going to be able to make it. Um, but this is the power of Mithril Coat and Sting. Um, he cancels that and instead gets a beautiful one. And so he obviously doesn't reveal himself. That goes back in the pool. And now we are, um, he's four corruption away from being corrupted. And uh, that means all of these eyes are safe 
All of these three eyes are safe tiles for him. So I use my ring uh, on, it doesn't really matter my, um, my Palantir die or my character die because I don't have any attacks with them. If I had something like um, Fighting or Akai or Ring Wraith or Abroad or something like that, these would matter. But it doesn't matter because I don't have leadership with any of these armies. None here, none here, um, none here. Um, so I also use Nenya to turn that die into an eye, and now there are four dice. If we had misplayed um, there's another way, then it would have seemed like there were already four dice in there. But it was correct the way we played it, and now there are four dice, but I had to spend a ring to do it. Um, so I go ahead and move along. Um, I, I'm not sure why. I decided to just attack first into the Shire without playing Half Orcs and Goblin Men because I figured, hey, just in case I can save the card. Um, but that Hobbit ends up fighting really hard and does three damage before I do one. It doesn't really matter. Um, I go ahead and get uh, an Elite into there. And he thinks about mustering into the Shire, but instead he just plays Dead Men to guarantee safety. And then um, I attack into the Shire. I know that I'm not going to win this turn. We're going to next round. And so unless I roll four eyes, he's going to um, have good chances of a victory. So he goes ahead and moves. And at this point, the Hunt Pool is quite a bit in his favor. There are only three tiles that will let me win. Um, and all the rest are good for him. And we draw a one. So one of the things that he that he noted when I said, you know, it, kind of, it felt kind of bad when um, I rolled... Uh, when I got rid of his Wills of the West. It felt kind of unlucky. Um, and I prepared the chances of that happening. So the chance, and he said, you know what? It all balances out. I felt like the hunt luck was pretty good. Um, so the chances of him rolling three or more Wills of the West was only like 4%, three or 4%, right? That is very unlikely to roll that many Wills of the West. Um, but if you look at the hunt simulation, this is, this is a rough approximation. These are actually the actual rules that I had and the tiles that I drew and the stronghold tiles. Um, and on average, you're going to get six successful hunts. But actually, in my game, we only got three successful hunts. And that's about a 5% five, 5 chance. So he said luck balances out, and he was right. I mean, it, it, it doesn't always, but in this game, it really did. He got lucky on the hunt, but I got quite lucky to be able to get rid of those um, those wills, wills of the West. And the other information was there were two reveals. Um, you would expect more than two reveals. I was like only a 2% chance to have only two reveals in his um, going towards um, Mordor. Though obviously at, at some point he, was, he would have preferred to get revealed instead of not. Um, and the corruption, I inflicted 11 corruption that game on his way to Mordor and we would expect um, 15 corruption to get inflicted. So, you know, he definitely got a bit lucky or pretty lucky on the hunt. Um, but I, I did get, um, you know, the, the hunt, the hunt in Mordor was much more average. Um, in Mordor, I revealed him twice and that's what we'd expect given, given this hunt pool. And, um, I, insp I inflicted seven corruption. And so maybe I should have inflicted one more, but it was pretty close. And, um, you'd expect he, he used seven character, seven dice. Um, we expect him to use about seven character dice. So, um, you know, that, that was the game. Let me show the statistics. Um, this is where we ended up. It ended up um, pretty pretty averaged out. Um, you know, I was a little low on, on sixes, but, you know, it's pretty close to average. If anybody has uh, suggestions about what I could have done better in this game, I certainly would, would welcome your thoughts. Um, we're all trying to improve, so please comment with your thoughts. And if you have other games that you think I should review, please uh, please send them along. I'd love, I'd love to see them. Either leave them in the comments or email me at warrotheringchamp at gmail.com. Thanks so much.